I recently built a tester vehicle with ball shaped omnidirectional wheels. I also previously built an omnidirectional robot with standard omni wheels which have smaller wheels around the edge so they can run in all directions. The problem with these types of omni wheels is that they generally have a large wheel that runs in one direction but rely on the smaller wheels to run in a perpendicular direction. These small wheels are obviously worse than the bigger wheel at traversing lumps and bumps in the surface the vehicle is running on. In the case of the ball wheels, they still rely on a smaller diameter of the ball touching the ground as the wheel rotates in the other axis. And eventually they rely on a small wheel on the very peak of the hemisphere when the wheel is in a position where the hemispheres can no longer rotate. So in this video I'm going to look at another way of making an omnidirectional robot, but using normal wheels, and look at the various ways it can drive. Just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lulzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printing projects and check out 3dfuel.com. So I've got one big chassis piece and I've got some mounts for the wheels. Each of those fits in a hole, I'm not using bearings on this project, so they just fit in there and are a pretty tight fit and they move quite freely. I've got a cap that fits on top and stops the other piece falling out of the bottom and of course that acts like a keyway so now I've got something to turn the whole thing with. I've got some high-tech HS805BB Plus servos, which are giant servos, so if we compare those to a normal servo you can see that they're much bigger and much heftier with thicker gears. Each one has a 3D print screwed to its servo horn, which as you can probably tell mates with the keyway that I've put on the rotating parts, and that's largely to make it easier to install, so I can screw the screws into both parts, which face each other, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to. So now we can mount those with a servo bracket, and that means that I can rotate the wheel mount with those servos, and those servos move a whole 180 degrees. Thanks to Trosson Robotics for sending me these motors. These are 6 volt gearhead motors. They actually have an encoder in them, which I won't be using. I'm just going to power them, and I'm going to use those for each of the four wheels. They came with these handy aluminium mounts, which makes them much easier to attach. So the screw holes in the bottom screwed into the print, and screws that go into the face of the motor. The wheel hubs are 3D printed PLA with a TPU tyre, and each one has a captive nut that you can just see there with a grub screw to attach it to the flat on the motor shaft. So we've got four wheels and each of them rotate independently driven by those servos so we can do a number of driving configurations. And the wheels are placed as best possible so they rotate on the spot due to the off centre motor and the way I've designed the mount for those motors. Each one is going to be driven independently by a separate motor driver, so I've got four BTS 7960s, and I've also got an Arduino Mega so I can drive all of the PWMs, which is 8 pins I need for the drivers, as well as the servos. And I've got the NRF 24L01 radio chip there, and as usual I'm going to be using the Universal Remote that I use for all my projects, which is another NRF 24L01 chip and another Arduino Mega. And this started life as the Open Dog 2 remote, and before that the Open Dog 1 remote, and it's also been used in lots of projects like Sonic the Hedgehog and to control a real transformer. So it's a bit of a rat's nest but everything is wired up and that includes the four servos wired to power and the Arduino, eight PWM pins wired between the motor driver and the Arduino for the motor drivers as well as power to the motor drivers and the enable pins to the motor drivers. I've got a 7.4 volt LiPo on the bottom which powers most of the motors and the servos and a USB boost pack which powers the Arduino. To start with I've configured some basic driving modes which of course are forwards and backwards but I also have the ability to rotate the wheels all to 45 degrees and spin on the spot which gives me quite a lot of possibilities. 
As well as that though, I can steer all the wheels in the same direction like four wheel steering, and therefore I can transition directly sideways, rotate on the spot and drive forward and backwards as much as I want to. So I can drive in a wiggly line, or I can rotate and drive in any direction, forwards or sideways, or any angle in between the two in both directions. Now my servos only rotate 180 degrees, but that still gives me quite a lot of possibilities. But before we carry on with that, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is Brilliant. Brilliant is a website and app built off the principle of active problem solving, because it takes more to learn something than just watching it. Just like me building robotic vehicles, to really learn about something you have to do it. Brilliant has recently increased the interactivity on their platform to a new level, and they're continuing to improve their courses to add more interactivity to them. For instance, the Algorithm Fundamentals course can help you learn programming without having to dig through loads of coding syntax. The course has fun interactive challenges and allows you to shift around blocks of pseudocode. You can get immediate feedback on your results, and after you've learned the fundamentals with this course it's much easier to learn to write actual code. So it's really not just about memorising or regurgitating facts for a test. You can pick a course you're interested in and get started, and if you get stuck or make a mistake, you can read the explanations to find out more and learn at your own pace. If you'd like to join me and a community of 8 million learners and educators today, click the link in the video description below or visit brilliant.org slash James Bruton. Right, let's see what's next for this omni-driving vehicle. But what if we wanted to drive the vehicle like a normal automobile, where we steer and we drive in a curve in one direction? In this case we've got four wheel steering, so we need to position all four wheels, so we drive like this. There's a concept called Ackermann steering geometry, which is a mechanical linkage used in normal automobiles, and this means that the outside wheel is at a different angle to the inside wheel, because it's at a different radius from the centre of the turning circle. However, in our vehicle we don't have any mechanical linkages between the wheels, our wheels are driven by electronics and code, and that means we need to do some maths. So I've mapped out some example angles in CAD, we've got a centre line here and you can see that the outer wheel is at a smaller angle to the inner wheel, and that means they're all pointing at the same centre of rotation. And as we move that centre of rotation, we can see that the angles would change on all four wheels. That's pretty easy to work out though, because we've got two right angle triangles, one making up the position of the inner wheel and one making up the position of the outer wheel. We can label the straight lines as adjacent and opposite, and that's adjacent and opposite to the angles that we need to calculate. So using high school trigonometry, we can say that tan of the angle is the opposite over the adjacent. And then we can write that in code and use inverse tan to work out the angle. So I've got two bits of trigonometry in my code which work out the inside angle and the outside angle based on their positions from the centre of turning, and it then turns the radians into degrees, and then turns them into servo milliseconds we can write out to the servos. Additionally I've worked out which way I'm steering by looking at the value of the steering stick, and working out which way round I need to swap around the angles so they are applied to the appropriate wheels. Now as I steer the robot you can see that the inside wheels go to a much tighter angle than the outside wheels, and that happens dynamically as I change the angle and change the distance that I want that centre of rotation to be from the centre of the robot. And you can see that works in both directions, now I've switched it round, so if I steer the other way it switches it around to the other set of wheels. I can still do swerve steering, which you twist the stick to activate, and in fact all of the things are mixed together because I've added the values together, so I can still swerve steer by steering and translating sideways, and then steer like an automobile at the same time using Ackerman steering. I also went to the trouble to make sure the outside wheels run faster than the inside wheels because they now have a greater distance to cover, and I did that by just using the same piece of trigonometry and scaling the motor speed as I do it.
Well, that seems to work pretty well and it's really fun to drive as well. I think one improvement would be, as well as varying that center of rotation out of the side when I move the stick sideways, since we've got four wheel steering, we could actually vary the center of rotation to the top and bottom using another axis on the controller. I think at some point the wheels might have to turn inside out because they can only do 180 degrees as we move that center of rotation round. But that could be a fun way to drive as well as having the modes that we've got at the moment. So I'm going to publish all the CAD and code. So if you'd like to have a go at building your own, then you can. Those are on GitHub and the links in the description below. So if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, those links are in the description below as well. And YouTube channel members and patrons can get access to all the videos up to a week early, as well as sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up to be part of that discussion. All right, that's all for now.